What, is this week 32? So I gave all of you a copy, okay? I gave all of you a copy, and then um, you can also find a copy of this in the week 32 folder um, if you need one. And for the people who are um, watching, uh, watch the video, so you will find a copy of this in the week 32 folder. So let me show you what I'm expecting, and then we're going to send you guys on it. All right, so let's read the first one. Um, Mr. Slinsky, can you read it out loud, please? A uh, 0.5 kilogram car is traveling at 5 meters per second when it slams into the spring. The spring compresses and brings the car to a stop. Assuming no friction, what is the maximum compression distance of the spring? This is no friction? Um, assuming no friction. Come on. Is there a part B? Really easy one. All right, so what we have is we have the before and after, so we're going to use the pie chart. No, no, we're going to use the bar charts. So sketch out a bar chart real quick. The bar charts look like this. So we have um, gravitational energy, kinetic energy, and elastic energy. Gravitational energy kinetic energy and elastic energy. So this is my system. Tell me something you think is probably in the system. The car. Yeah, the car is probably in the system, definitely. What else might be in the system? Spring. Spring. What else? The G field. So, you know what, I like that, like, the G field may be in the system. It may not be, but I like it. Now, you could also say the Earth is in the system. That's the same representation. So the gravitational field is caused by the ball or by the cart and the Earth interacting. So if you say the cart and the Earth are in the system, or you say the cart and the gravitational field are in the system, those are both acceptable to me. Okay? All right. Where's our energy when we start? How's all our energy when we start? Kinetic. It's all kinetic, right? Now, here, we don't have a sense of how many boxes to make, so I'm just going to draw a bar without, without the boxes. Okay? I'm just going to draw a bar without the boxes because we're actually going to assign a value for that. Okay? We're going to assign an actual value for the height of that bar. Is that cool? All right. Um, any gravitational to start? No, because it's not up a hill. Any elastic to start? No, because no, it's not pushing or pulling on any springs. Is that cool? All kinetic? Good with that? Yeah. All right. Now, what about the after picture over here? Um. Yeah, yeah. Would be all elastic because it says it came to a stop and it's not an incline, so there's not a force of gravity. And then it didn't lose any um, thermal energy to friction because there's any. Yeah, what is that with that? It's a lot of gross. What was that? Um, so how tall should this bar be compared to the other bar? Same, Same height? Yeah, four yeah. bars. We're going to put four bars. Same height. Well, and we're not going to put any in. Yes. Okay. okay, we're not going to put any in because, like I said, we're going to assign actual value, but it's okay. This is free form. This is kind of free form. I was counting. All right. I like this. So this looks pretty good to me. I feel like this is, this is a good situation. So um, can we actually calculate the amount of kinetic energy here? Is that something we can do? Okay. How are we going to calculate the amount of kinetic energy? We're going to use the kinetic energy formula. Now, we didn't develop this on our own. We actually cheated a little bit and looked it up. But still, we have a sense that it's the energy of motion, and the speed and the mass determine the energy of motion. All right? So do we have these values? Yes. Does it say in the problem how much? All right, what's the, uh, what does the M stand for? Mass. What is this? And what is the mass? Does it say? Five kilograms. Half kilogram? Yep. And does it say the speed? Um, 
down five meters per second. Um, so five squared is? 25. 25. Half of that is? Uh, 12, 12, 12 and a half. And half of that? Six point two five. Six point two five. What she said. Now we're going to use the units joules. We'll we'll talk about that another time, but it's joules. Um, it's a unit doesn't have a real context for us yet, but we'll we'll do that. Later. spring compresses some, true? X is our compression distance. X is our compression distance. That's what we want to solve for. Is that cool? So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that elastic energy is equal to 1 half little k x squared, where this is the elastic energy. Little k is the spring constant. Is it given to us? Does it give us the k value? What's it say? So 50 newtons per meter. 50? Yeah. 50 newtons per meter. Okay, I like that. So we need to figure out what the x is, true? In order to do that, we're going to need two things. We're going to need the spring constant, which we have, and we're also going to need the elastic energy value. Yes? What was the x again? That That's the x is the compression distance, that's what we're solving for. Okay. Right? It says, what's a compression distance? That's what this is. If you want to store energy in a spring, you can either squeeze it together, compress it, or you can stretch it out. That's what the x is. Is that cool? Now, I want to solve for this x right here. In order to do that, That's a question mark. That's what I'm looking for. In order to do that, I would need to know the spring constant, which I know, and the elastic energy value. Do we know the elastic energy value? Do we? Check your neighbor. See if your neighbor knows. I will give you a hint. We absolutely do. Check your neighbor. See if your neighbor knows what it is. by the way. Yeah. How's everything? It's good. Are you happy to be back? Yeah. Good. Uh, Luke, do you happen to know, did you check your neighbor? Yes, I did. Did she tell you something good? Um, I told her something. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> that is enough of that. Uh, what's the value of the elastic energy? It is 6.25. That is correct. Now, how did you guys come up with that? Uh, there's no energy. So, what I like about that is, if you look, the height of this bar here is... 6.25, because that's what we calculated. And since there's nothing going in or out of the system, what does that mean? 6.25. That's right, which means all of our energy is the same, which is cool. Oh my gosh. So this one is also has a height of 6.25. Now I can just plug and chug. 6.25 is equal to 1 half 50 times x squared. So I'm going to multiply 6.25 times 2, and I'm going to get 12.5. 50 divided by 12.5 is a fourth, so 0 0.25 is equal to x squared. How do I solve for x? Uh, square root. Square root both sides. Yeah. 
Square root of 0.25 is 0 0.5. Which means it compressed 0 0.5 meters. How does that sound? How's that look you guys? Is that look doable? Stay where you are. All right, so what you guys are going to do today is I'm going to